autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is going to help us control, for example, high blood pressure. When you have high blood pressure, voluntarily or consciously, you don't reduce your blood pressure, right? That is done using reflexes controlled by the autonomic nervous system. As you can see here, an increase in blood pressure is captured by the receptors that you have in the blood vessel. That information is sent to your brainstem, and from there, the heart rate is reduced in order to reduce the blood pressure. So that's an example of a visceral reflex. Divisions of the autonomic nervous system, there are two main divisions. One of them is the sympathetic nervous system, and the other one is the parasympathetic nervous system. So since we have two divisions, sympathetic and parasympathetic, the sympathetic is going to be basically thoracic, and the parasympathetic, you will see that, is going to be basically on the top, cranial, and sacral right here at the bottom. Like the autonomic nervous system, there are actually two nerves. You have the preganglionic fiber and the postganglionic fiber. Right here, this is a ganglion where the preganglionic fiber and the postganglionic fiber are going to synapse. The sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic starts in your thorax, in the lumbar area. Now, if you look at the thoracic area, you're going to see two fibers because we said that we have a synapse right here in the ganglion. The preganglionic is short. The postganglionic is long, but you will see that the postganglionic can actually get three different pathways. It can go to the top, it can go straight to the abdomen or to the bottom. Right here you have the spinal cord, this is preganglionic, and here you can see the three pathways that the postganglionic can take to the top, for example, to the iris and the salivary glands. Straight goes to your abdomen, to the sweat glands, for example, the pyloractor muscle in your abdomen, and goes down, for example, to your liver and your spleen. Right here you have the solar plexus, set of nerves that they are going to radiate in the abdomen. Adrenal glands, it got to do with the postganglionic lung. Parasympathetic division, so parasympathetic is at the top and at the very bottom, cranial and sacral. The parasympathetic, the preganglionic is long and the postganglionic is short. Parasympathetic is going to be at the very top, cranial, and at the very bottom, sacral. So, but if it's a cranial, what type of nerves do you have in the cranium? You have cranial nerves. So what cranial nerves are going to have a parasympathetic component? It's going to be oculomotor, which is cranial nerve number three, facial nerve, cranial nerve number seven, glossopharyngeal, cranial nerve number nine, and vagus, cranial nerve number 10. And you can see the vagus, as you know, it goes all the way down in order to innervate all these multiple different organs that we have. And those are going to be part of the parasympathetic nervous system. The enteric nervous system, the nervous system for the intestines is a separate group of nerves. In some other books it says that it's not, that it's actually part of the autonomic nervous system, so it's not very clear. Neurotransmitters, preganglionic, have acetylcholine. Postganglionic, acetylcholine. So then, which one is the most common neurotransmitter that you're going to have in the autonomic nervous system? Acetylcholine. The other one, as you can see right here, is norepinephrine. So which ones are the receptors? The receptors for acetylcholine are going to be muscarinic and nicotinic receptors. And in the case of norepinephrine, the receptors are going to be alpha and beta receptors. The effects in the organs. In the case of the heart, for example, the parasympathetic slows down your heart and the sympathetic speeds up your heart. So most of the time, the sympathetic is going to make things faster and the parasympathetic is going to make things go slower. The parasympathetic is going to produce pupil constriction and in the case of the sympathetic, it's going to dilate your pupil. The sympathetic nervous system is constantly making the blood vessel smaller. When you want to dilate, the stimulus is less and the blood vessel is going to dilate. 